Hi, my name is Ali Shesava from Bridget Digital. As you may know, calculating switching losses is actually quite difficult and inaccurate. Now, luckily, for many low power power supplies, we don't actually have to make this calculation because often we can uh, select our power MOSFET based on conduction losses only. So, in this video, we're going to show how you select an optimum power MOSFET for your power supply for low voltage, low power uh, power supplies. And if at the end of this video you still feel you need to calculate the switching losses, then please watch our next video where we deal with how we select the MOSFET based on switching losses. Okay, so to select a power MOSFET for a low power, low voltage uh, power supply, uh, as a bare minimum, I need three parameters to be able to look for my MOSFET. VDS, the voltage of stress across the MOSFET, ID, RMS value, or the DC value, the current that is going through the MOSFET, and RDS, which is the, um, um, the, the, the drain source resistance of my MOSFET when it is fully on. Uh, let us for simplicity say that we are designing a small power supply. Let's say that it's uh, five watts. Uh, let's say I've got 12 volts in and I have an RMS current for simplicity of one amps. So I have here a buck converter. And I am trying to find these three parameters so that I can go and look for a suitable MOSFET. So if my input uh, voltage is uh, is 12 volts, the voltage of stress across this is going to be 12 volts. Now, obviously, I need to allow some margin. Typically, we allow between 20 to 30 percent. So, if I allow 30 percent margin on this one, then I, I need to be looking for a MOSFET with a breakdown voltage of around 16 volts. You'll find that um, 16 volts is actually quite an uncommon voltage. So the choices of power MOSFET with 16 volts breakdown voltage is actually really quite small. So we often go and look for one level higher, uh, which is more popular. And of course, a popular breakdown voltage for a MOSFET is 20 volts. So I already know the uh, breakdown voltage of the MOSFET that I'm going to look for. I'm going to be looking for a 12 volt MOSFET. Good. So I've done that one. Now, we said that the RMS current through the MOSFET is going to be one amp. Uh, of course, you know these. These are part of your specification. So I know that the current through this is going to be one amp. But this is what I have calculated. The power supply will be operating at 100 degrees. Uh, the, uh, I beg your pardon, the, um, the MOSFET. Um, but the data sheet, often the most obvious number that you see is given at 25 degrees. So if I go and buy myself a one amp at 25 degrees power MOSFET, it will be underrated. Therefore, we often allow a factor of three. So times one amp. So I'm looking for a power MOSFET that has got a 25 degree rated current rating of three amps. That is my minimum. So uh, does that mean that I can go and buy myself a 1000 amp MOSFET which is bigger than 3 amps? Well, no, because as the current rating of the MOSFET goes up, it will be harder to drive, the capacitances will be bigger, so the switching losses will go up. And of course, that is the topic of our next video. So for now, I need to put an upper limit and typically we put an upper limit of a factor of 6. So. I need to be looking for a MOSFET that is between 3 to 6 amps. That's great. I can go and look for a power MOSFET between 3 to 6 amps. So I've done that one also. The final thing that I need to uh, work out is my RDS. And for that, I need to know my conduction losses. Remember, for this small power supply, I'm trying to avoid calculating the switching losses. For simplicity, let us say that uh, our efficiency for this power supply, as per our specification, is going to be 96%. 
uh, we said that the uh, output power was 5 watts, that's P out. So with an efficiency of 96%, that means that my input power P in will have to be around 5.2 watts. Okay, so to meet this efficiency target, which is part of my specification, the grand total power that I can lose is 200 milliwatts, or my power supply will not be running at my specified 96%. So how do I divide this grand total power loss budget that I have? Now, again, we have done another detailed video about how you uh, divide this up in a good and pragmatic way. Uh, for a buck converter, for now, let us say that I allow 40% of this power loss budget here. I allow another 40% here and I allow 20% everywhere else, which will be the magnetics and current sense and chips and everything. Okay, so 40% of these 200 milliwatts is gonna give me 80 milliwatts here. It's gonna give me another 80 milliwatts here. And it's gonna give me 40 milliwatts everywhere else. As we know, the total uh, losses in the MOSFET is divided up between switching losses and conduction losses. And calculating the switching losses are difficult, so I'm trying to avoid doing that. But I still need to share this 80 milliwatts, the grand total loss that I can have in my MOSFET, into switching losses and conduction losses. Again, please watch our other video, which explains what is a good way of dividing these up. For this uh, converter, let us say that our duty is around 50%, the switching frequency is not too high, so I'm going to divvy this up. 50-50, so I'm going to allow conduction losses, 40 milliwatts, and switching losses, another 40 milliwatts. Now, calculating the switching losses is difficult. I'm trying to avoid it for this small power supply. We'll talk about it in the next video on how we do it. But calculating conduction losses is actually quite easy because I know that... P cond, my conduction losses, is equal to I D RMS squared times R D S. Okay, so in order to meet my efficiency, this cannot be bigger than 40 milliwatts. I knew from my specification that that was one amps RMS, and therefore I can calculate my R D S. And here we go. 40 milliwatts divided by 1 amp per squared, my RDS has to be smaller than 40 milliohms. Okay? But again, please remember, we are calculating these for when the power supply is operating and it's going to be operating hot. The first value of the RDS that you see on the data sheet of the MOSFET, again, often is the RDS at uh, 25 degrees. So if you go and find yourself a MOSFET with RDS of 40 milliohms, um, you are underrating it because when it starts running and it gets hot, it's not going to be 40 anymore. At 100 degrees, it's going to be around 80. So again, we allow another 50% margin. So I will go and look for 20 milliohm MOSFET at 25 degrees so that by the time it's running and it's hot, I will have around 40. Anything bigger than this value will violate, or in no likeness will uh, violate my conduction losses uh, upper limit and therefore my efficiency. So I am looking for a 20 volt MOSFET with a current rating of between three to six amps and an RDS of around 20 milliamps. If this narrows down my choice enough, then I only end up with two or three choices, which is often the case for a small power supply, then I don't even need to calculate my switching losses. But if after narrowing these down, I still end up with 100 choices, then I do have to go and calculate my switching losses, which as I mentioned earlier, we're going to do in another video. So let us go to the computer, let us type these in, and let us see how many choices we actually have and see if we can select our MOSFET. 
Okay, so uh, I'm looking at uh, DigiKey's website and I'm going to search for my MOSFET. I'd just like to point out at this uh, point that we do not get paid uh, by DigiKey. It's just that uh, they have got a really fantastic uh, search tool and I, and I really like how fast it is. By all means, you can use whichever vendor that, uh, that you like. Uh, let us, uh, however, uh, for uh, sake of an example, look at uh, how we find our MOSFET. So first, I will search for uh, MOSFETs then single MOSFET. You'll see that I have got 43,000 choices and obviously I have to narrow these down. However, we know from earlier that we are looking for a MOSFET with the breakdown voltage of around 20 volts, a current between three to six amps and an RDS of less than 20 milliohms. So let us, uh, let us look for that um, and see what we get. And first, however, I'm going to narrow it down a little bit more. You don't have to do this. I'm going to look for in stock, ROHS compliant, Obviously, I would like to have the data sheet. And for now, I'm going to exclude it, uh, the marketplace product. So we just look at what is available on, um, on, on DigiKey. Uh, and then uh, we are looking for active. So we don't want to buy an old MOSFET or one that's been uh, discontinued. End channel MOSFET. And you'll see that uh, my choices fall from 43,000 to just under 10,000. So we apply all of that. And then uh, if uh, I limit the MOSFET to 20 volts, that's the breakdown voltage of, uh, of my MOSFET, it falls down to 430. And remember from earlier that we said that uh, we're going to limit the current to between three to six amps. That was because our RMS current was one amps and we allowed a margin, a lower margin and an upper margin. So I'm gonna scroll down and I'm going to limit uh, everything from, I'm only going to look at from three to six amps and my choice uh, falls down to 107. And finally, we said that in order to meet our efficiency requirements uh, and our conduction losses, the RDS had to be smaller than uh, 20 milliohms. And there we go, I've got this one, this one, and this one. So anything beyond that is going to violate my efficiency targets. Uh, anyway, and if I apply this limit also, you can see that we have got a grand total of only three MOSFETs. There is really no point in going and calculating the switching losses if your entire choice is three, and they all seem to be extremely similar. At this point, it's actually quicker just to uh, build, a, build a power supply and, and measure the switching losses instead, and hopefully we meet our uh, efficiency targets. Uh, if you are uh, designing a bigger power supply with a higher current rating, then the chances are you don't end up with three, you will end up with maybe 50 MOSFETs, and it's at that point that we are going to have to calculate the switching losses in order to narrow down our choices and of course, that is a topic of our next video. Uh, hope you enjoy this video and hope to see you at one of our workshops.